loves, welcome back to a witchy themed vlog. I have done a witchy vlog before and you guys seem to really love it and I've been wanting to do another one and I figured what is the best time to do it than in the lead up to Beltane, which is on May 1st and the fire festival celebration. It is the Sabbath that celebrates the midway point between spring and summer. So it means that we are quickly approaching the longest days of the year. And it's one which I typically see a lot of celebrations around. For instance, in Edinburgh, there is actually a fire festival that happens every year for Beltane. It does happen for a fair few of them. So it does happen around Halloween or Samhain as well, but it is the Beltane fire festival that's where it started and so that is quite a big event in Edinburgh every year. I don't know if I am going to it this year just because it does fall on a Monday so I may be quite tired from work but either way I'm hoping to do some celebrations of my own in a very kind of like low-key homely manner. There is also a witch market that's happening just before Beltane that I am planning on going to and I figured why not read some witchy books as well because I always have plenty of them to be reading so since I do have so many witchy books I actually didn't know how to decide what to read so I basically made my patrons decide for me. So I threw up a poll onto Patreon and had them vote for every book that they would be interested in hearing my thoughts on and I will basically read through them in the order that gained the highest votes to lowest. So I don't know if I'm going to reach all of them because I did put four different books in that poll but I'm going to try for at least two or three. So the one that I have actually already started because it gained the highest votes from my patrons is The Lighthouse Witches by CJ Cook. This is a witchy book that's set in Scotland and as you can probably imagine based around a lighthouse. So this one is actually described as being quite gothic and almost like a horror story of sorts, which to be fair, I feel like most witchy books could be considered a horror story just because whether it's the fantastical version of witchcraft or the historical version of witchcraft, the more realistic version is in itself quite horrifying just because of what happened. But this says that upon the cliffs of a remote Scottish island, Longhaven, stands a lighthouse. A lighthouse that has weathered more than storms. Mysterious and terrible events have happened on this island. It started with a witch hunt. Now, centuries later, islanders are vanishing without explanation. Coincidence or curse? Liv Stay flees to the island with her three daughters in search for a home. She doesn't believe in witches or dark omens or hauntings, but within months, her daughter Luna will be the only one left of them. 20 years later, Luna is drawn back to the place her family vanished. As the last sister left, it's up to her to find out the truth but what really happened at the lighthouse all those years ago. I love a mystery and I love witchy stories, so I imagine that this is gonna be a hit. But I'm currently around 150 pages into this book already. I am listening to the audiobook of this one as I'm kind of doing some chores and such. And that is what I'm going to be doing for the rest of this evening. So I wanted to pop in and give you my initial impressions because this one seems very interesting in that it feels quite modern. We're following a few different timelines because we have 1998 is the time when these three daughters are quite young and they've just moved to the island but then we also have it 20 years later which would be around now or 2018 should I say. <laughs> we have these two different timelines and then we also have a past timeline showing the initial witch hunts so there's quite a few stories and timelines being woven together and I feel like that's done quite seamlessly. And initially when I started this book, it did just feel like a very contemporary story of a woman who was struggling to raise her daughters and the attitudes and relationships between her and her daughters were proving to be quite difficult to work with. So I was kind of a little bit hesitant at first to judge too quickly because I was like, if this is what the entire book is like, then I'm not going to enjoy it. But then we did seem to slowly seep into more fantastical things. Now I don't know if this is actually just straight up fantasy or not but it does seem to have something going on that must be fantastical so I'm very intrigued to see how fantastical the story ends up being. At the minute it's actually kind of reminding me of House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland so if any of you have read that one I feel like the vibes of that are somewhat similar to this but in a more I guess rugged setting because we are quite literally on an island in this whereas House of Hollow is quite city based but yeah that's the closest comparison I can think of. But so far I'm very intrigued we do have more of the mystery coming in now and I am very interested to see what the outcome of this is. So like I said, I'm gonna listen to more of this tonight while I do some chores. I also just really feel the need to reset my flat. I need to do some kind of, I don't know, like a deeper cleanse of sorts because I have had many things going on in the past like three weeks now if not four weeks, including flat issues, which means that I haven't been able to keep my space as maintained as I want it to, which is why I'm doing quite a bit clean this evening because it's the first evening I've had where I've kind of just had the time to sit and do something. So I think beyond just my typical cleaning, I'm also going to light some incense, maybe make up a floor polish and such because I do have different ingredients for that and just really reset my space so that I can 
move forward with the week with just a clean mindset because my god do I feel like I need it. <laughs> Alrighty squad, <laughs> I actually finished reading The Lighthouse which is a lot quicker than I thought I would. I read this in two sittings, I completely did not intend to, but what happened is I was listening to the audiobook and then by the time I came to turn off the audiobook I realised I only had an hour left and I was like well I might as well just listen to it, so I did and I finished it. I rated this book three stars, I, I had kind of conflicting opinions about it because this book had a really good atmosphere in terms of being set on a kind of isolated island, a small town setting that has lots of secrets going on. Everybody seems to know something but nobody wants to say. And being welcoming but also slightly disapproving to any newcomers. That is the situation we are introduced to within this book. And as I said before we are following multiple different timelines so we see that in a few different cases. But my main problem with this book is that I just felt like it was trying to do too much because I reached the halfway mark and it seemed to switch from a witchy story to a fey lore story and then it went back to witchcraft and also potentially time travel and I was just kind of like what is going on? Like it became really difficult to understand what the actual magic of this book was and I get that all of these things can be interwoven but I think come the end it just felt a little bit too convoluted for me to keep track of what was actually meant to be going on because there were so many different stories and theories about what was happening on this island and while I do usually love witchy things, fey things, even time travel to some extent, I do think that there needed to be just a little bit more of I guess a slower progression into the explanation behind how all of these things were linked because it did just feel like in the first part of the book it was a witchy story, in the middle of the book it was a fae story, at the end of the book it was a time travel story. Rather than a progression of all of those things interwoven together it felt less like a here's the truth and here's the rumours about what might have happened and more just like three separate stories. Does that make sense? <laughs> and because of that I ended up losing interest because it got to a point where any new potential explanation just was instantly disbelieved because I knew that at some point some other explanation would come up because we kind of went through this cycle so many times of this is what's happening, oh but not really. Oh this is what's happening, oh but not really. And it was really not what I was expecting from this book. I didn't think that the outcome of this would have ended up as it was. I do think it could have been a lot more satisfying if we just took out some of the fey related lore of the story, which is very rare for me to say because I love the kind of fey lore that is included in this book, but I do just think that there is a time and a place for it and it wasn't necessarily within this book. I did however appreciate the very complicated relationship dynamics of family within this book because I feel like it was a very authentic representation of sisterhood, motherhood, all of those things, but yeah I think it did just ultimately end up being a little bit too convoluted for my liking so I rated it three stars because I like the atmosphere and I like the characters but I did just ultimately lose interest come the end. So I have actually since started reading Wild as the Witch so that is next up on the agenda and I don't think this will take me too long to read because I read The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin as well and that only took me like a day or two to read so I think this is going to follow the same sort of pattern but I'll tell you more about this one when I have actually read a little bit more of it because I only started it very briefly yesterday when I was out on a walk. I don't know whether that will be today though because I am just taking today as it comes. It is a weekend, I've just been on a walk which is why I've got sunglasses on my head but I have been so worn out for weeks now and I've finally been able to visit the river again. Oh my god. So for weeks now I have needed some intense grounding and I typically do this quite literally just by taking my shoes off when I'm outside and placing my feet on the ground. So that sounds all fine and dandy but I typically love doing this by the river. I have one specific rock that I sit on and I'll just take my shoes off, 
place my feet on the rock or even in the river itself but I've not been able to do so recently because all of the weekends that I've had free it has previously rained meaning that the river was too high for me to actually access these rocks that I sit on so I woke up today and it was gloriously sunny and I was like right today is the day so I have just spent some of the morning sat by the river sketching having a coffee by the river and just kind of grounded myself and it was very very much needed. I feel so much better just for having doing that and I definitely do need to make it part of my routine again because I have just kind of been disconnected to that sort of thing recently so I need to get better at self-care within my weekdays but for now I'm going to use this weekend to really like focus on having a reset weekend. I'm quite excited as well because by the time I got home my photos from Brighton actually arrived in the mail because I do get them printed elsewhere just because it'll be better quality than my own printer so I can actually spend some time this evening doing some scrapbooking so I think what I'm gonna do for most of today is just pop on some music play Animal Crossing do some scrapbooking and if I feel like reading I will read but I'm excited just to have like a chill weekend I'm gonna fling open the windows while it's nice and sunny probably draw some tarot do some journaling and just have a really restful weekend because my god do I need it <laughs> day of the witch market I have already been and these lovely kneecaps belong to Lauren but I wanted to give you a little haul of things that I got at this market because I actually did purchase things it's been a while since I've been and purchased things so oh let's start okay we'll just go in order of what I bought so the first thing that I ended up buying was this book called Fears and Fairies Haunting Tales of the Fair edited by Elizabeth Dianley but it's basically one of the British library collections and I do have another one of these which is like Celtic Tales but this one just caught my eye for obvious reasons and I really love these they are quite literally just a collection of short stories this one says that the enormous fascination with fairies in the 19th and early 20th centuries popularized depictions of benevolent butterfly winged beings and glittering pantomime figures <sighs> that was a long sentence <laughs> Uh, but the fae have always had a more sinister side, taking inspiration from folk tales and medieval legends, the works of weird tale and ghost story writers such as Arthur Macken, uh, M.R. James, Angela Carter and Charlotte Riddle show that fairies, goblins and other supernatural entities could be something far more unsettling. So I love the darker side of Phalo. It's basically just one of those things that obviously we do have like this synopsis says the more butterfly winged, wholesome little cute little creatures, but it is the mischievous side of fairy lore that I absolutely love and the darkness and just all of that fascinates me. This whole idea of there being a whole other realm of just pesky magic basically. So I saw this and I was like, well, you need to come home with me. So it did. I then ended up picking up some earrings, which I have been wanting to swap out some of my earrings for a while because all of my helix piercings, so I've got two here, one over here, and then one kind of like in the middle of this ear. I haven't swapped any of them out besides this one hoop on this side, which is now too big, so I need to swap that out again. But I don't know if any of you guys have seen the people who do like ear curation things where they just put together like a whole set of earrings that look really cool together. I basically want to do my own version of that, but it's taken a long time for me to figure out what I want it to look like. But I saw these earrings and I reckon these are gonna be the thing I'm gonna base my kind of collection around because the color of these are stunning. So these are just gonna be my typical lobe piercings if it wants to focus, but these are carnelian. And just, are they not the most autumnal earrings you have seen? I am absolutely obsessed. So they're gonna be like my, my new everyday earrings that I 
we'll just keep in and then I'm gonna start collecting earrings for the rest of my year. Piercings that will look great with these. So they are from Blue Kitty Creations. So information if you wanna check them out. It'll be perfect for after September 23rd. <laughs> I will kick you out with this one. <laughs> um, and then the final thing I bought was a candle and this one is just called Protect. It's like a little protection candle but this smells absolutely divine because it's got sweet orange tea tree, peppermint, spearmint, eucalyptus, cinnamon and clove. And basically when we smelled this it was just so clear that this is the sort of candle where if you feel even vaguely ill or like you need your, the inside of your body to be cleansed you light this candle because my god it's just oh, you would light this and your entire soul would be touched <laughs> it smells so good so fresh and the woman at the stall was so so friendly she got very excited when she found out that lauren was a virgo and i'm a pisces <laughs> and we were having like a good old chat about how that is like the perfect combination for friends <laughs> so we were having a chat about that and quite a few things actually we were there for a while and she just was so friendly she this is actually from yogi oils again if you want to check them out please do but she had so many candles that just smell absolutely divine and these are just like really pretty as well because it has like a whole bunch of stuff on the top yeah they do sprays as well which lauren got one so she's currently digging around behind me so this is an example oh that's like a glass bottle as well that's nice um lauren got this spray so that is an example of there we go i also got the same candle which shows how amazing it is <laughs> and she was just spraying this all over us to try it so <laughs> we left that place smelling very nice <laughs> so yeah had a grand old time and i am very glad we went so very witchy day feeling very inspired and i think now we're gonna watch some kind of studio ghibli film and just chill for the rest of the day so yeah ashley got me a gift i did my camera's gonna die so yeah <laughs> actually got me a really beautiful print for my house. Laura's just moved house so I was just like you need this because her living room was green and I was like that is just gonna look beautiful in your house so Plus, I got it for her. I really like moths. And I, like I love that you're just like <laughs> only showing up to here. <laughs> you don't need to see my face. <laughs> but yeah we both definitely did some spending and we went for cake and coffee afterwards so now we're just gonna chill. <laughs> Time for a reading update because I have made some really decent progress. So I, the other day, finished reading Wild as the Witch by Rachel Griffin. And this proved to be quite a middling read for me, but not because it was terrible or incredible or anything like that. It was just enjoyable. It actually proved to be a really good read for the purpose that I was using it for. So I was listening to this via audiobook whenever I went for a walk. So I would go for like an hour's walk and I would just listen to this in those hour long increments via audiobook and it proved to be the perfect read for exactly that because it was something that you could dip in and out of without really losing track of what was going on. It was quite easy breezy and it was a simple enough story that you could become invested enough to stay interested but not lose track of what's going on if you did dip out of it at any given point. So it proved to be exactly what I needed at the time and I do think that for a YA book it is a very good recommendation for a witchy read. It's something that I would have loved loved a lot if I was younger but obviously I've said a few times that I've kind of been growing out of YA which is understandable. This one to me definitely did have the younger tone to it so it is something that I really noticed but again that is the audience for it. What I will say though is that I was really quite impressed with the representation of the romance aspect in this because a lot of books do have romance in it and I love romance but depending how it's done in YA books it does make me feel a little bit strange if the tone of the book itself feels young because I just don't think it's necessary for every single book geared towards a younger audience should have like a heavy romance aspect in it because it's so prevalent elsewhere that sometimes it can just feel a little bit icky you know like it's just not necessary at that young of an age and that's not to say that teenagers don't have romances hell they probably have more romances than I do in my life right now <laughs> <laughs> but it's more just the case that they are presented in a way where they're gonna live happily ever after as if they're not like 15 years old or something. It's that sort of vibe that I get the ick from. But in this book specifically, it is presented in a way where the intimacy of the romance isn't really pushed upon 
the audience. It's a book that almost ends at the beginning. So you see them start to gradually get more comfortable around each other and you see them start to have these conversations and you see them at the very beginning of their relationship so you can kind of leave it to the imagination how they get on with their life from that point on and I feel like it was a really interesting transition from the whole enemies to lovers trope without it being like super intense. And I just feel like it was very authentically done. So I was really quite impressed by that. In terms of the plot and everything, I do think that everything was just a little bit convenient, but that is almost to be expected from a book with this much of a story within this few pages. And I would have liked to see the magic system built upon because considering how much time she spent explaining that magic was almost like another sense and it was wonderful to have this ability. There were mentions of different types of witches and I just didn't really understand them because they were literally mentioned by name like twice. <laughs> and there was also the story in the past which was mentioned a fair few times that we never really had a resolution for. And again, it's one of those situations where you could just leave it to the imagination and it did slightly fit with the tone of ending the story at the beginning of another story or an another phase, let's say. But it would have been nice to at least see a little bit of a resolution to that because we did keep referring back to it over and over again. But like I said, this was a three star read for me. It was a nice enough read, it was middle ground. I do prefer The Nature of Witches, over this one but I would definitely still read any other witchy books that Rachel Griffin pulls out because I feel like she just has the fun light-hearted witchy vibe down. So Rachel Griffin to me is a really strong YA witchy author and now I am moving on to The Witch in the Well by Camilla Bruce. This one is a witchy mystery so we have two different timelines one in which a woman was prosecuted of witchcraft and something terrible happened to her in the small town and then we have the modern day timeline where two people who used to be friends have come back to the small town after living there in their teenage years. One of them has died and the other one is trying to dig around and find out more information about both of the women's deaths. So the woman who was accused of witchcraft years ago and the woman who she used to be friends with. I am currently 100 pages into this and I already have pretty conflicting thoughts because with the modern day timeline specifically, there is one perspective that is driving me a little bit insane because with the modern day perspective, we have a woman who is very social media heavy. She is very much documenting her presence online. I hate social media being mentioned in books, specifically when it's done the way that it is in here where hashtags are just dropped around absolutely everywhere because it just feels really outdated. So what she's doing, the story will be there being told and it will just suddenly break away, say that she takes a photo or snaps a photo, posts it on Instagram and then it will quite literally say what her caption of that post is and it's always like hashtag this, hashtag that, hashtag girl power and I'm just like nobody does that, nobody speaks in hashtags anymore, at least that I see. So it feels really outdated and I feel like this is a problem that I have with a lot of books that try to be relevant in this social media age because I feel like it's a lot more effective to say that you know she took a photo and posted it on Instagram versus actually writing out what they're saying because very very quickly that will become outdated. You could write one thing within a book that is incredibly relevant to the day that you wrote it but by the time it's gone through the publishing process that's such a long process that it's probably going to be outdated compared to how quickly social media moves in the way that people talk the things that are relevant so I just think it's really hard to get the tone right and not seem outdated so it is just a shame because that is really just giving me the ick I do not like it when people do that and just throw hashtags around in case it sounds more like someone's heavy on social media but I can honestly say that it's been a long long time since I've seen someone just throw in a hashtag as part of a sentence. <laughs> and then we also have the other modern day perspective. So the woman who died and we know that she died, we are reading some of her diary entries and it's kind of insufferable but in a way where I feel like it's meant to be but it also means that it's painful to read because she has this belief basically that the witch from the past has decided to share her body and is almost acting as her soul or some kind of soul guide and she keeps referring to everything that happens as my soul is showing me the way like she is doing this but what is really interesting about this is that obviously you can have this spiritual side of things where you believe that that is what's going on but something about Camilla Bruce's writing makes the slight suggestion without you even realizing that this might not be the case. I could not tell you at what point in this book I started to think that something weird was going on. I could not point out the specific sentence that made me suspicious but at some point within reading this book I started to think is she actually just having psychological issues where she is quite literally hearing voices in her head? 
Is it a psychological issue or is it a spiritual issue? Is it complete fantasy? I don't know. And this is the thing that made me really love You Let Me In by Camilla Bruce because come the end of that book, I didn't know whether to believe the fantastical element or the psychological element where it's all just a mental illness instead of another fantasy world. And I feel like the exact same thing is gonna happen with this book, in which case I will end up really loving it because I love the sort of book where you just cannot decide what on earth is going on and it's meant to be that way. I think it's such an effective way to create a thriller mystery that if you can't decide come the end what you believe, I feel like it's really effective. So I think we're about to head down the route of that and having all of these suspicions raised and I'm looking forward to being fully integrated within the mystery of the story because like I said so far some of the characters and their perspectives just feel a little bit insufferable but I think that once we are well and truly wraps up in their story that it wouldn't really matter as much. So I'm actually hoping to finish this tonight because I am listening along with the audiobook. I'm relying on audiobooks constantly at the minute. Even though I am reading them physically as well, I feel like my concentration has been really terrible recently. So I'm using both my eyes and my ears to read a book to make sure that I'm actually taking in what I'm reading. But I've only got a couple of hours left of the audiobook, so I'm hoping to finish it tonight. It is pretty late, but I am tempted just to stay up and finish it. I don't know, we'll see, but I will keep you updated. Oh, I wanted to let you know as well that I did end up watching Spirited Away when Lauren was around the other day. And I have made like a whole checklist of Studio Ghibli films to watch because I do really want to be that person who's like fully invested in Studio Ghibli. I've only watched three so far, so I've watched Kiki's Delivery Service, Howl's Moving Castle, and now Spirited Away. I, for years, thought that Spirited Away was about a horse. Could not tell you why. I can only presume, because Lauren pointed out that there is a cartoon film about a horse called Spirit, but I can see a very specific image of this horse, like, on a poster in my head, and I can't find that poster anywhere. So I don't know if it is that film that I was thinking of. I can't ever remember watching that film, but I can only presume that is why I thought that Spirited Away was about a horse. It's not, it's completely different. In fact, it's batshit crazy. <laughs> I was watching Spirited Away like, what is going on? But honestly, I accept the weird and I accept the wholesomeness and I accept the weird and wonderful whimsy that is Studio Ghibli and I am very invested in read reading? No, watching the rest of the films. So I am hoping to gradually make my way through the checklist. I don't know what to go with next though, so if you have any suggestions, then do let me know down below. I'm kind of leaning towards my neighbor Totoro, but I'm also tempted by a few others. So I can't make a decision about what to read. I keep saying read. I can't make a decision about what to watch next. So make the decision for me. Otherwise I'm just gonna keep dithering and not actually decide on anything and just never end up watching anything again. <laughs> So I am about to run out the house because I need to go and get my talons redone. These are so outgrown. And I just, I want to go back to the dark vibe. I want like claws that are black, basically. So I'm going to go get my nails redone. And then I'm actually heading into Glasgow today to meet up with my friends Lauren and Amy. We're going to go for Korean food. And I am so excited because it's kind of like a Korean barbecue vibe. And they have little robots that bring over part of your food. So I really hope that uh, I get to see that happen. But Korean food is my favorite type of food. So I am so excited and knowing me I'll probably end up in a bookshop so I'll take you along with me but I will give you a reading update later on as well but I do quite literally need to run out the house right now which is kind of annoying because um today is one of those days where I just I'm not vibing with anything I wear and I know it's less about the clothes and more about my own mindset but I just I want to spend the day in my hoodie you know I don't want to be faffing around with my appearance but I need to go outside so tough shit <laughs> Okay, I am 
am back from Glasgow. We had a nice little trip out. We went to a Korean barbecue type restaurant. We went there and then we did go to Waterstones and Forbidden Planet afterwards. So I was gonna come home and show you just the one book that I got, but then I actually ended up returning home to three parcels of book mail, which I was not anticipating today, but I am very much enjoying. So I thought I would unbox those with you and I have just spent quite a long time just sorting out books that I am unhauling. So these are books that I've already technically unhauled, like I've taken them off my shelves with the intention of getting rid of them, but actually getting them out of my flat is a different matter. So I have just been hoarding them in storage until I could finally be bothered figuring out what I was gonna do with them all because there's a lot of them. So I have basically just gone through one of those trading websites where they basically collect books from you and give you just a little bit of money for them. It's not anything too grand, it literally is like, you know, 50p to a pound each, but it gets them away and in the hands of people who will actually want to read them. But also I largely do it just for the collection service because I cannot get this amount of books transported to another place. So if they can just collect the books from me and take them away, then that is fine with me. So I've just spent some time sorting those out and I've also set aside some books that some of my work colleagues have claimed. So they're just like over there ready to sort out when I can actually ship them because it is a bank holiday here so I can't do it until next week anyway. And I honestly think I'm gonna spend the rest of the evening just sorting out even more books to unhaul because I'm getting rid of quite a few middle grade books and I did end up emailing a primary school earlier this week to see if they would accept the donation of them because these are all in like really good condition, they're really good middle grade books. And I walk past this school fairly often and I just keep thinking like, I would prefer the books to go to them before I take them to a charity shop so that the kids are directly getting them and contributing towards a school library is just something that I would prefer to do. So yeah, I emailed them to see if they would take them and they are happy to accept them. So still need to figure out the logistics of that, of how I'm actually getting these books to the school. <laughs> Cause books are not light when you've got a whole stack of them, but also I just haven't walked into a school other than when I attended it many, many eons ago. <laughs> so I don't quite know the logistics of just wandering in with a bunch of books and being like, enjoy. But that'll just be a thing that I figure out next week. But yeah, I am just organizing things really. But I figured before I continue with that, I would show you a little unboxing and also what I bought while I was out today because we went into Forbidden Planet and I did not know that Junjito has a new release. So this is called Tombs. And again, is one of his short story collections. This is a very like similar design to a lot of the ones that I already have. Junji Ito, if you don't know, is a very famous horror manga artist slash author. I never know whether you call them artist or authors or if it's both. But this one says that countless tombstones stand in rows throughout a small community forming a bizarre tableau. What fate awaits a brother and sister after a traffic accident in this town of the dead? In another tale, a girl falls silent, her tongue transformed into a slug. Can a friend save her? Then, when a young man moves into a new town, he finds the house next door has only a single window. What does his grotesque neighbour want, calling out to him every evening from that lone window? I love Jinjito. The stories that they come up with is just weird and wonderful and horrific and probably some of the most messed up stories that I've ever read, but that's why I like them. So happy to add this to my collection. Although I did recently move my manga collection to my book trolley and the top Row is very satisfyingly all Junji Ito, they all fit perfectly, which means that this one won't. <laughs> so sad to ruin the perfect fitting vibe that we have there, but at least we have a new manga to read. <laughs> from these parcels I'm gonna unbox, I do have a couple of fairly ones, you can tell from the tape. And I do think I know what these are. So let's have a little looky. I need scissors. <laughs> I'm also gonna try not to destroy the packaging too much so that I can reuse it. This one is The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. Oh, look at the little spread edges, they're so cute. This is one that I wasn't sure if I wanted to read or not, but I have been recommended this book a few times now. But look at the design. So this is a change of colors and we also have these really cute spread edges. The end papers are signed by the author. And we have this cover. Look how cool that is. All the little books everywhere. Oh, I love that. So this says that Florence Day is a ghost writer with one big problem. She's supposed to be penning swoon-worthy novels for a famous romance author, but after a bad breakup, Florence no longer believes in love. And when her strict, but undeniably hot new editor, 
Benji Andor, won't give her an extension on her book deadline, Florence prepares to kiss her career goodbye. Although when tragedy strikes and Florence has to head home, the last thing she expects to see is a ghost at her front door. Not just any ghost, however, but the stern form of her still very hot, yet now unquestionably dead, new editor. As sparks start to fly between them, Florence tells herself she can't be falling for a ghost, even an infuriatingly sexy one. <laughs> I really hate romance synopses. But can Benji help Florence to realise love isn't dead after all? <laughs> this just sounds a lot of fun. I have no idea how we can have a ghostly love story, but I'm willing to find out. So then we have the one which I have been waiting for. I'm so excited to see this one in person. Oh, it's so pretty. So this one is, oh, it's so pretty. This is In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. Everyone's called Ashley. <laughs> That's just amused me far more than it needed to. They're all spelled differently to my name though. In my dreams I hold a knife. This is a dark academia thriller that I absolutely loved. So as you can see, beautifully foiled. We've got the old traditional style of book spine. A quote on the back saying, six friends, one college reunion, one unsolved murder, which pretty much tells you everything you need to know. And then we have these stenciled edges, which, Stop focusing on my face. <laughs> Have Latin down the side. Oh, this is beautiful. I feel like the graphics for this did not do it justice because this is just oh, astounding. I forgot about the end papers. Look at that. That artwork is incredible. Have a closer look. That is stunning. And it is also signed as well. I loved this book and I'm so glad that we've got this edition because the original cover is horrible. So I will very, very gladly add this to my shelves. And oh my God, is it gonna, it's gonna make them look so good. I might actually face this out on my shelf. And then I also have this Waterstones parcel, which will be a pre-order, but I don't know which one. <laughs> I didn't know this was coming out yet. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, this, I'm gonna take off the cellophane because we're just gonna reflect the ring light right back at you, but my next volume of The Girl From The Other Side has come out. So I have been collecting these collector's editions because one, they are just absolutely beautiful, but two, these include three volumes in one. So instead of getting all the individual volumes, I do typically like to get the bind ups. And this series is one of my favorite manga series that I've read so far. It's so wholesome and it just gives me all the serotonin that is needed. I'm currently five volumes in and I've actually been procrastinating reading the sixth one because the sixth one was the last one that I had until now. But these are beautiful kind of like leather look editions that just look so perfect. And with this like autumnal theme as well, I want to walk with them. I want to be there. These editions as well also have like certain pages that are coloured in and it's just absolutely stunning. I love this story. I highly recommend The Girl From The Other Side if you haven't read it yet. It's so pure and wholesome. I don't know what I'm going to do when I've actually read all of these because I don't know when the fourth collector's edition comes out. Is there a fourth collector's edition? I don't even know. I need to look how many volumes are in the series because I'm just reading them as if it's never ending, which to be fair is a pretty good shout when it comes to most manga. <laughs> so that is my little book haul for today. And now between unhauling and hauling books, I am surrounded by books. <laughs> also, I forgot to show you my nails. I went in with completely different expectations of what I was wanting to get, but I changed my mind literally while I was there. And I like having my clothes back. I do typically get them a little bit shorter than what I prefer having just because my nails grow really quickly between appointments. So I don't want to have like literal talons that are unruly between appointments. So yeah, a little bit shorter than what I usually would prefer, but that is purposeful. Um, but yeah, anyway, I thought I would give you my final thoughts on The Witch in the Well, even though I've still got my bookmark in, I have finished this. So we're gonna take that out. The Witch in the Well ended up being a very mediocre read for me, which I'm quite disappointed about, honestly. I don't know if, <sighs> I don't know. 
It was one that didn't leave too much of an impression on me, which is a very, very different opinion of what I think of You Let Me In. And maybe my love for You Let Me In is what let this one down a little bit because I had such high expectations that I'm not sure they ever could have been met. In theory, it had all of the things that I should have loved within the story because it had the witchy vibe, it had a mystery, it had some questionable reasonings behind what was going on and all of those things are the things that kept me enticed within the story but I just didn't like the modern timelines in this because we saw it twice over and I know I said before about the depiction of social media really bothering me and just seeming kind of outdated despite being a new book and it was something that I just really didn't like. It did definitely add an interesting element to the story, especially because there is so much spiritual content online and so feeding into that was a very interesting route to take, but I think it's just something that, I think just between the atmosphere that I wanted it to achieve with this kind of gothic vibe, the social media spirituality just really became quite jarring for me and it wasn't something that I could easily switch between, so I think that is ultimately where my problems with this book lie, especially because it doesn't really say too much about that in the synopsis but that was ultimately a really large part of the story especially when it came to the trial aspect of the story I guess because it was almost playing into the whole trial by media situation where people have already decided what they think before they've even been given any evidence because of what they've heard online or people self-sabotaging by posting things online and again it could have been a really interesting thing but I just don't think it fit the original part of the story. It was almost like two stories were being told in one and they didn't quite glue together too well so I rated this one three stars. I don't know if it's one that I would warm up to upon reread maybe but for now at least I had very different expectations of what this was going to be going into it and sadly it meant that I just didn't really vibe as much as I thought I would. And I'm actually quite surprised because I started editing this vlog back and I realised that all of the books that I have read within this vlog have been three star reads and usually witchy reads happen to be a much higher rating from me so maybe it's just the ones that I've chosen. It's not like I'm ever going to give up on my witchy reads and I do have many more that I still want to read so if you want to see another type of vlog like this then do definitely let me know because there's always plenty of witchy books to be reading but I think I'm actually going to wrap up this vlog here. So if you made it this far into the video then leave the crystal ball emoji down below. If you've read any of the books that I've mentioned or if you have any recommendations for witchy reads that you would want to see my opinions on then do let me know that down in the comments. But for now I'm going to love you and leave you and let you get on the rest of your day so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did then to leave a like and a comment so let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already then please consider doing so. Down in the description box you'll find information to all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well so be sure to check that out if you haven't already but for now I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!